Intel's Hibana Labs unveils Gaudi 2 and Greco AI processors. Intel's Hibana Labs launched two major new products, its Gaudi 2, the second generation of the Gaudi Deep Learning Training Processor, and Greco, the successor to the Goya Deep Learning Inference Processor. Intel says that the processors offer significant speedups relative to their predecessors and the competition. Gaudi 2 processors are now available to Hibana's customers, while Greco will begin sampling to select customers in the second half of this year. Both Gaudi 2 and Greco made the leap from 16 nanometers to 7 nanometers via TSMC, and in Gaudi 2's case, the 10 tensor processor cores present in the first gen Gaudi training processor have increased to 24, while the in package memory capacity has tripled from 32 gigabytes to 96 gigabytes, and the onboard SRAM has doubled from 24 megabytes to 48 megabytes. This is the first and only accelerator that integrates such an amount of memory. The processor has a thermal design power of 600 watts compared to 350 watts for the original Gaudi, but it still uses passive cooling. Intel showed a few comparisons between Gaudi 2, its predecessor, and the competition on a handful of popular tasks. On ResNet 50, for instance, Gaudi 2 achieved 3.2 times the output of Gaudi, 1.9 times that of an 80GB NVIDIA A100, and 4.1 times that of an NVIDIA V100. On some other benchmarks, the gap between Gaudi and NVIDIA's 80GB A100 was even more pronounced. For BERT Phase 2 training throughput, Gaudi 2 outperformed NVIDIA's 80GB A100 by a factor of 2.8 times. Interestingly, Gaudi 2 also adds support for FP8 in order to enable faster training and better utilization of memory for large models. FP8 also made an appearance in NVIDIA's Hopper announcement back in March, and Tesla's internal supercomputers support configurable FP8. Gaudi 2, which is now available to Habana customers, is available in the mezzanine card form factor and as a part of the HLS Gaudi 2 server, which is intended to support customer evaluations of Gaudi 2. The server is equipped with eight Gaudi 2 cars and a dual-socket Intel Xeon subsystem. For more substantive deployments, Habana is partnering with Supermicro to bring a Gaudi 2 equipped training server to market in the second half of 2022 and is working with DDN to develop a variant of the Gaudi training server augmented with DDN's AI focused storage. Furthermore, a thousand Gaudi 2s have already been deployed to Habana's data centers in Israel, where they're being used for software optimization and to advance development of the Gaudi 3 processor. Then, there's Greco, the successor to the Goya inference processor. Greco takes the same highly efficient Goya to 7 nanometers, essentially doing the same thing that they've done with Gaudi 2. They've boosted the memory on card from DDR4 to LPDDR5, essentially getting 5 times the bandwidth and also pushing the on-chip memory from 50 to 128 megabytes. Greco moves from a dual slot to a single slot form factor. That compact form factor will allow customers to actually double the number of accelerators in the same host system. Gaudi 2 and Greco serve as the latest entries into an increasingly crowded AI accelerator arms race. Intel's comparisons between its Habana products and NVIDIA products also come with a significant asterisk, which is that they don't include comparisons against NVIDIA's forthcoming H100 GPUs, which promise substantial speedups relative to the A100s and are slated for shipment in Q3 of 2022. Intel sees Habana as a complementary technology to the Ponte Vecchio GPU for processing AI at scale. However, the NVIDIA Hopper has a specialized engine for transformer models, and they'll have to get more performance data for both companies to properly compare. Intel is making an important distinction as to the role of these two processors. The Ponte Vecchio GPU is for running large-scale, high-performance computing, AI, and graphics workloads that require mixed precision as well as scalability and flexibility. For artificial intelligence, you won't get the relentless price performance that an application-specific integrated circuit like Gaudi 2 can offer at scale, but you will have a scalable, flexible environment within the XE family. Intel summarizes the launch of its new Habana processors as a prime example of Intel executing on its strategy to give customers a wide array of solution choices, from cloud to edge, addressing the growing number and complex nature of AI workloads. AI model predicts post-operative recurrence of Crohn's disease with high accuracy. Using an artificial intelligence tool that emulates how humans visualize and is trained to recognize and classify images, investigators constructed a model that predicts the postoperative recurrence of Crohn's disease with high accuracy by evaluating histological images. The AI tools also revealed previously unrecognized differences in adipose cells and significant differences in the extent of mast cell infiltration in the lining of the intestine. The findings can be found in the American Journal of Pathology. The 10-year rate of postoperative symptomatic recurrence of Crohn's disease, a chronic inflammatory gastrointestinal disease, is estimated at 40%. Although there are scoring systems to evaluate Crohn's disease activity and the existence of postoperative recurrence, no scoring system had been developed to predict whether Crohn's disease might recur. For training, whole slide images of surgical specimens were cropped into tile images, labeled for presence or absence of postsurgical recurrence, and then processed by EfficientNet B5, a commercially available AI model designed to perform image classification. 
When the model was tested with unlabeled images, the result indicated that the deep learning model accurately classified the unlabeled images according to the presence or absence of disease occurrence. Next, predictive heat maps were generated to identify areas of histological features from which the machine learning model could predict recurrence with high accuracy. The images included all layers of the intestinal wall. The heat map showed that the machine learning model yielded correct predictions in the subserosal adipose tissue layer. However, in other areas, the model was less accurate. Images with the most accurate predictions were extracted from the test data sets of the non-recurrence and recurrence groups. Among these images, the best predictive results also contained adipose tissue. Because the machine learning model achieved accurate predictions from images of subserosal tissue, the investigators hypothesized that subserosal adipose cell morphologies differed between the recurrence and non-recurrent groups. Adipose cells in the recurrence group had a significantly smaller cell size, higher flattening, and smaller center-to-center -center cell distance values than those of the non-recurrence group. To the investigator's knowledge, these findings are the first link to post-operative recurrence of Crohn's disease with the histology of subserosal adipose cells and mast cell infiltration. The findings enable stratification by prognosis and post-operative Crohn's disease patients. Many drugs, including biologicals, are used to prevent Crohn's disease recurrence, and proper stratification can enable more intensive and successful treatments of high-risk patients. Engineers use artificial intelligence to capture the complexity of breaking waves. Their model's predictions should help researchers improve ocean climate simulations and hone the design of offshore structures. MIT engineers have found a new way to model how waves break. The team used machine learning along with data from wave tank experiments to tweak equations that have traditionally been used to predict wave behavior. Engineers typically rely on such equations to help them design resilient offshore platforms and structures, but until now, the equations have not been able to capture the complexity of breaking waves. The updated model was able to make more accurate predictions of how and when the waves break. For instance, the model estimated a wave's steepness just before breaking and its energy and frequency after breaking more accurately than the conventional wave equations. The results published in the journal Nature Communications will help scientists understand how a breaking wave affects the water around it. Knowing precisely how these waves interact can help hone the design of offshore structures. It can also improve predictions for how the ocean interacts with the atmosphere. Having better estimates of how waves break can help scientists predict, for instance, how much carbon dioxide and other atmospheric gases the ocean can absorb. For instance, in climate simulations of the ocean's potential to absorb carbon dioxide and other atmospheric gases. The code can also be worked into simulated tests of offshore platforms and coastal structures. The number one purpose of this model is to predict what a wave will do. If you don't model the wave breaking right, it could have tremendous implications for how structures behave. With this, you could simulate waves to help design structures better, more efficiently, and without huge safety factors.